Hello everyone, this is Josh with Incompetech. Welcome back for another wonderful series. Hopefully you people will enjoy it. I know it's going to be boring for some as we're just going to go over real basic computer hardware components and how they fit into the grand scheme of things. Hopefully it will help some. Um, of course, I'm really only doing this because it's something that I know and something that I've been asked a few times about from family how does this work how does that work what does this do you know where does this go so I figured I'd throw something together and we could go over it so like I said it's gonna be basic computer hardware we're gonna go over all the major components of a computer and what functions they perform so let's just get into it so the biggest part of the computer that ties it all together is the motherboard and the motherboards I'm not gonna read you know what it says it you know precisely it is basically a printed circuit board that's specifically printed to allow the CPU which we're gonna talk about later don't get you know worried about it yet to communicate with all of the other subsystems and uh, you'll see uh, down the road how everything kind of ties in and plugs together but if you don't know what a printed circuit board is a printed circuit board is basically a layered board with layers of copper and then a cover and then they etch out sections of the copper where they don't want that to flow all the way through to a certain specific area um, and then they keep layering that up until it's built the way that they want. So this is what a motherboard looks like. This is your generic, everyday, typical, current type of motherboard. Not an older motherboard. And what you'll see as we go through this, um, this section right here where my mouse is, is where your CPU will go. This section here is where memory goes. And, and these are add-on slots for additional cards and stuff. And we're going to go over each of these sections, um, you know, one at a time. So the CPU socket, what I just mentioned where the CPU goes, is where just that. The CPU plugs into that and electrically connects it to the motherboard and all of the subsystems. Um, each CPU type has a different architecture where they have more or less pins on the back of it and I'll show you the pins uh, on the uh, CPU here in a second but as CPUs have expanded their uh, abilities with more cores faster speeds this that and the other the architecture has had to change to, su to, to supply the amount of connections and um, bus speeds that they have so based on the overall architecture the CPU socket is designed to fit certain types of CPUs most sockets are multi CPU architecture capable um, one to two back plus the current not really going much further back or they you know the net uh, but you'll see in a second here where you will notice and this is like I said where the CPU socket is this is where the CPU will sit in and mechanically this little silver section right here will pull out and lift up and this whole silver piece slides forward or backward then the CPU will sit in there and once you've got the CPU inserted you'll fold this back down which will lock the CPU into place and then the CPU, of course, is the central processing unit, which is also basically the brains of the computer. It's what takes all of your input, creates the output, or takes uh, the signals from various parts of the motherboard and converts it into something for you to see, or writes it to a hard drive to be saved, or puts it into memory. And this is a typical CPU, and you'll note that it's fairly 
ambiguous until you actually learn about them. But they don't just come right out and say, you know, this is corner one, two, three, four, put corners one, two, three, four to match onto the CPU socket in corners one, two, three, four. They just typically do this. They'll create a notch on one piece of it on both sides and or skip a couple of pins in one section so that it'll only fit in that socket one way. If you try to put it in in any of the other orientations, it won't fit. It'll just sit there and you can't slide the pins down into the socket itself. But if you, you know, look at the way that they're designed, they're designed typically with a notch like this or missing pins and a notch on the front that says that side will correspond to a notch or missing pins on the socket itself. The next thing we're going to talk about is the memory slots. Those are to hold what we call RAND or random RAM, sorry, RAM, random access memory. And RAM is volatile memory, meaning that when the computer turns off, whatever's in RAM disappears. Uh, there's also non-volatile memory, um, and that we'll get into at a later point. And these are the slots for RAM. Typically, motherboards will have two or four. Um, newer motherboards may even have more for more memory, but you'll always put your memory in, your RAM in, in groups of two, so at least two slots. And if it's more, it's got to be four or six or eight, so on and so on. And this is what your RAM typically looks like. These are all different types of RAM. Uh, this very top one up here is a hard soldered type of RAM that sits on the motherboard or is actually uh, on this chip. And these are the um, different types going back oh, decades and decades. And this is what RAM today kind of looks like. And you'll see that there's a notch in the bottom and you'll notice that there's a notch you know in this one and notch in this one and notch in this one and they're in different places and the slot that they fit into is notched accordingly so that you can't put the wrong type of RAM in there even though some of the RAM is the same length width height it won't fit into the wrong slot because of that notch being in a specific area on the RAM so your BIOS, or the basic input-output system, this is what really kickstarts your computer. So when you press the power button on the front of your PC and it starts to boot, what's actually functioning at that point is the BIOS. And what it's doing is it's looking at how it's configured, what you've told it in the, in the BIOS settings if you've changed anything or what the manufacturer set it to, and in writing code to that BIOS by the manufacturer will then, as it boots, say, okay, well, I'm going to look to see what am I to boot from. Am I to boot from a hard drive, a USB port, a CD-ROM, etc., etc. And then it's going to look at those devices and see if there's any of them available. And whichever order you've told it or it was told by the, the by the vendor to boot from is the order it's going to look. So it could be boot from CD-ROM first, boot from flash drive second, boot from hard drive third. And if it finds something bootable in the CD-ROM, it'll boot from that. Depending on whatever it is, you may end up with reinstalling Windows or some other OS. If it's boot from flash, you could be booting off of a flash drive to troubleshoot your computer or maybe run virus scan or something. But if neither of those are found, it'll jump to the hard drive. If you've got a hard drive installed, which obviously you should, it'll boot whatever operating system is installed on there, if you've got one. If not, it would be saying, no boot media found, insert boot media. Then once the BIOS finds that boot media, what it does at that point is passes all functions off to the CPU to handle from that point on. So it, it finds the boot media, starts the boot media booting up, and then passes everything off to the CPU to do everything else. 
And <clears throat> on this motherboard, that BIOS is right there. A Winbond BIOS right down here in the bottom right hand. And this is what it looks like up close. Now, the, that, that one's hard soldered in. Um, they used to be where you could pop them in and out and replace them. But these days, well, and, and I'll explain. They were popped in and out in the older days because you couldn't write back to them. They were right once and you were done. It was never to be wrote to again. Um, nowadays, they've made them where you can rewrite them many, many times over and over as many times as needed to do an update. So you'll get a BIOS update or your computer will say, hey, there's an update and you're, you know, you'll have to run through all this stuff. Or if it's a Windows system, some of them are built to do the, the BIOS updates within Windows automatically for you so you don't have to really worry about it. <clears throat> but that's what a BIOS looks like and that's typically where they, not where, but what they look like today they're usually hard soldered on they're not removable and you can write to them many times and then there's the pci connections pci stands for peripheral component interconnect and they're used to connect additional boards or components to the motherboard and the cpu and things like video cards tv cards additional network adapters uh there's a whole lot of other things it could be it could be just a uh, if you don't have usb a usb board or if you don't have firewire a firewire board um but those are all the pci slots now notice the two really small ones on the very top and the very bottom and then there's one white one in the middle sometimes they're called agp depending on if it's specific to uh graphics and agp just means accelerated graphics port and um <clears throat> if you don't use the onboard graphics and you're adding a graphics card let's say you're playing high-end video games or something you'll want to add a high-end video card and agp ports are usually the better ports because they were well used to be now with pci express and PCI Express 16s and stuff that you can get even faster than AGP. But those are your typical PCI connections. Most motherboards have maybe two or three, not this many. And then you have SATA. SATA is Serial Advanced Technology Attachment. And it's really an extension of what we all knew going back to forever ago what ATA was which was advanced technology attachment and that's really where hard drives and CD-ROMs and such like that would connect into the motherboard um, totally different type of connector today with SATA than it used to be with IDE types um, you'll see that these SATA connectors are in different positions like these these here are pointing up and these are pointing up then there were these that were pointing you know outward it doesn't make a difference they all pretty much are doing the same thing um you can see some of them say say to six say to five say to four this one over here uh i don't see what it says and this one says say to one so this is where your primary connections are so i'm guessing these are the additions you would start to this is where you would primarily connect <clears throat> and that would be where you connect your hard drives up if you have more than one hard drive <clears throat> your power connector so every pc obviously has to have power um <clears throat> in the chassis or the tower um there'll be a power supply typically in the top back portion or bottom portion and it supplies 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts, all plus or minus, to the motherboard. Um, and it's through this connector is the main, and then this one's an additional for uh, ATXs. And the connectors themselves, if you'll note, there's a round and a square, a round and a square, a square and a round, and it alternates kind of sort of like that to fit these connectors here. And this is what a power supply looks like, and it has, you know, 
the, this is that connector here and this right here would be this connector which goes back here and then all of these additional power connectors here would be to connect up CD-ROMs, hard drives to get power. And then there's the pin connections on the front of the motherboard. Those connections are for your power button, your LEDs for the power, your hard drive flashing on and off LED, things like that. And they all connect, and in this case right here, and this is the pinout that most of the uh, pins have. Not all of them are exactly like that, but typically the computer manual, when you buy it, if you're you know installing it yourself, will tell you, this is what my pinouts are. This is where you connect the hard drive activity LED. This is where the power LED goes. This is where the power switch goes, etc., etc. Then there's the built-on connections. Most motherboards these days have built-on connections for audio, video, network, etc. And this is what the back of the motherboard looks like. And you can see there's a bunch of different connectors on the back. So let's start with the sound card. The sound card's where you'll plug in your speakers or your mic or both. And that's that little section right there. The green is output to speakers. Um, mic input is usually the pink one. I, I'd have to look at what the rest are for. Your network connections, what you connect it up to so that you can get to Yahoo or Google or whatever. And that's these two right here. This motherboard has two connect, two network connections. Most only have one. Um, a lot are coming with one um, hardwired and, and also coming with wireless. This one, I don't see where it had wireless anywhere. USB connections, everybody knows USB. You know, you plug your phone in to charge or your printer is USB to your computer. Well, that's all of those little connectors right there. PS2 connectors. PS2 is a older style keyboard and mouse type connector. Um, most keyboards these days are USB. Most mice these days are USB. But most motherboards today still keep installing the old style PS2 connectors like this. And they're specific. One will only fit a mouse and one will only fit the keyboard. HDMI. So if you have a high-end motherboard, it'll come with HDMI out. So you can plug it into your monitor or a television to get your, your video. And that's that port. Not all motherboards come with those. Most don't. Most come with either a VGI port, VGA port, sorry, or DVI. Um... Newer motherboards, newer higher end motherboards will have HDMI. Enhanced audio. So if you look, we we have audio output that we were doing back here. This is just standard analog output where you plug in your speakers and it's just a old rough signal they're not the greatest sounding but now we have an enhanced one where if you're in an audio file and you really want high-end audio this is a PCM PCM audio out and this is fiber audio out you could take either of these to say a, a multi media center and plug them in or uh, a receiver for like television and plug into there to get your audio output from your computer to your receiver in a enhanced audio so you could get a, a up to 7.1 sound so you could get high quality sound out of a motherboard that has the enhanced audio on it and that's all the basics there are to a motherboard now we didn't go into all of the extras, the hard drives, the printers, and all that stuff. I might go over some of that stuff later, um, but this is the basics of what connects to your motherboard, where they connect, and where all the pieces parts are. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, hopefully it made sense, and uh, hopefully you like it. If you do, let me know.
Well, that completes our show. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, subscribe and like. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up with comments, and I'll be talking to you soon.